Ladies and gentlemen, look who we have, Mr. Daniel. Welcome. Hello. <laughs> I see it's sunny there again. This is the yeah, it's not <laughs> the, yeah, the weather in Santa Barbara. But I, I, I gather you've got, I was going to say, you've Floridian type weather back home. Yeah, it's like I'm fanning myself. Like it's so, it's 37 degrees here, which I think is over 100, and, and, but it's cloudy as well. So it's, yeah. Let's not even talk about it. Music's so much more interesting. Right. So, so but, but yeah, because it gets humid over there too. So Very humid. It's so sticky. I'm wearing a t-shirt that's made of like gossamer. And I'm, I'm still, well, I'm, I've got pretty much from there upwards on the picture because you don't yeah, want to see it. Yeah, just, yeah. <laughs> TMI. Your, your, your diaphanous wardrobe, let's just, we'll move swiftly onwards. So, we have to be a little concise, yeah. Because I know you and I can blather on, yeah, yeah. Um, and we got three pieces. I, I this is this is a cool program. We got surprises because we've only got one camerata piece on this yeah. program, um, and then Nick has produced some other things, and um, we got lots of Mozart. But I wanted to ask you because I've been talking with the other musicians about um, how did they get started. So how did you get an oboe stuck to your face? Well, it, it is a very strange, if you look at where, it, where it's gone, it's a very strange place to have started from. So my father um, sold cars. My mother was, well, she was a, a homemaker to start with, and then she did old ladies' feet later wait, on. Wait, wait, so wait a minute. You're the product of a used car salesman. I, yeah. Why no, 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 no. Suddenly new cars. everything becomes so much more clear. No, no, no. New cars. Not hey, old I thought, I thought. And... But actually, he became a prison officer um, halfway through my childhood. So I'm actually the child of, of, the, of a prison officer and a, and a geriatric chiropodist. <laughs> um, the only music we had at home was two albums. One was the Beatles and one was the Rolling Stones. I'm not quite sure which ones they were. Um, and my father was a Rolling Stones person, but not, not a fan. My mother was a Beatles person. But we had Birdsong. My father had records, um, uh, little, 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 shall, you know, what do you call them, Schallplatten. What are, why am I speaking German? Little 45. LPs, but short players, SPs, short players. 45s. Of birds on, yeah, 45s of, of the birdsong. And he got stereo speakers so that the birds were sounding like they were coming down the chimney. Uh -huh. um, <laughs> and the thing is that my parents were churchgoers. And I mean, I sort of... I suppose, I, I don't know whose idea it was, but mum said, do you want to sing in the choir? And I said, sure, anything's better than this, sitting in the pews with you two. <laughs> <laughs> so from quite young, I, I sang in the choir. And then I how think young? she said, hmm? How young? How old were you when you started that? Seven. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe even six, could be even younger. Yeah, really quite little. And you got paid for it too in those days. I think they still do. Paid for weddings, you know, sixpence or something. This is a long time ago. Um, and uh, then I think I was given the choice. It was quite a rural area we lived in, in Buckinghamshire. I was given the choice between horse riding lessons and playing the piano. And I was a bit scared of horses. <laughs> I love horses now. But I, so I chose the piano and I absolutely loathed it and hated it. But mum said I had to continue. I'm very glad she did. It's not the first time somebody said that. Piano skills are really useful. And then actually what happened was that my, my mom's sister, my auntie, uh, had a very musical, has two very musical children, one of whom is a, a tenor called Charles Daniels. His, his, my mum married a Daniel, her sister married a Daniels. But I'm singular. Sorry. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> and oh, yeah. My, my cousin oh, yeah, Charles... You is, are. <laughs> my, cousin, <laughs> my cousin Charles is a really very well-known tenor, and he was a very successful choir boy at King's College, Cambridge. I didn't get into King's College Cambridge because I think I was probably a tiny bit dyslexic or something. I didn't pass the academic test. So I actually went to Salisbury Cathedral Choir. And in order to be there, you had to learn two instruments. So my grandmother said to my mother, the boy must play the oboe. And my mother said, what the f is an oboe? Because <laughs> she never heard of it. So my mother went and found me um, found a local music teacher and I, I had some horrible lessons and it was a disaster and then I did get into Salisbury and I was so lucky to have the most amazing teacher there Irene Pragnall who so, so had wait, wait a minute so how old were you when 
when you had the fate of uh, oboe? Nine. Nine, okay. Nine. And I'd already played the piano really badly for two years, or three years maybe. No, two years, I think. Um, but the thing is that when at these cathedral choir schools, it is, it's an extraordinary music education. I'm very proud to say that Salisbury was the first cathedral choir to, in, in, to have run a separate and equal girls' choir alongside the boys' choir. That's many, many years ago they started that. But my little niece has actually been in the choir there too. Um, it's, it's an incredible experience because if you love music, and it turns out that that age, I, I really did love music. And if you, you're, you're thrown into the most serious music that most composers has ever written. I mean, I was thrown into Bruckner, Messiaen, Britten, Palestrina, Mozart, Monteverdi. I mean, it was, it was like being bathed in the greatest music and, and actually being able to sing it because the boy voice is so incredible. And a couple of times I've actually played the oboe in Salisbury Cathedral, and that's an amazing feat. So, yeah, it all came from, from church. I'm, I'm not um, a churchgoer anymore. I, I have different sort of faith and spiritual needs and, and, and things, but I'm incredibly grateful to the church training because your sight reading, the, I mean, my, my sight reading is amazing. Your sight reading the whole time, every day, your sight reading. You go all, you, three services on Sundays, Wednesdays you're free. Um, two services on most Saturdays. So you're performing every single day of the week apart from Wednesday, all the way up to Christmas, all the way up to Easter, and over, two weeks over in the summer holidays. So it was, yeah. I, I sang on the very first recording of the Monteverdi Vespers with John Elliot Gardner. I was 10 years old. <laughs> so, okay, so this is great, but the oboe, so you're talking all about your singing. So the yeah. oboe, when did, that, when did that become a serious pursuit? And we have well, to get from there, and you've got to do this in about 60 seconds. I'm gonna give you 60 seconds. Okay. You have to get from there to, when I first heard of you, when you were 18 and yeah. the musician of the year. Okay, so um, this teacher I had, Irene Pragnall, was famous for getting her students on quickly. And we have these associated board exams over here. They're grades one to eight and then there's a coma. And um, I, within 18 months, I got my grade eight of starting playing the oboe. And I, I don't know why, but I think it's just something that came very naturally to me it's the same register as singing, so the musical expression of it is, is similar. So that music, musicality-wise, it felt like the same thing to do with the air. Um, I think after that, I needed to go back and do some more basic technique and things, but she got me on very quickly. So I just said, okay, well, I'll be an oboist, and that was, that was the decision. And then there was various, I don't know, it was not so easy when my boy voice broke. I found that really hard. And I still have dreams about being able, I have two dreams, two recurring dreams. One is I can breathe underwater. The other one is I still sing in my boy voice. I reckon they're oboe dreams. <laughs> but um, then I just suddenly, when I was about 15, I suddenly just started skipping lessons at school and going to practice. And I was doing about six hours a day and I was getting obsessed with why I couldn't play A sharp to B really cleanly and analyzing the, the actual mechanism of the muscles and of the instrument and then I was incredibly lucky to go in for the BBC Young Musician competition Young Musician of the Year and I won it I couldn't believe it I really I couldn't believe it I, re I remember that the thing is that was when 18 million people watched it because there were only three TV channels right so the whole of the UK on the number one channel turned in and watched it. I mean, I was interviewed by BBC Radio 1, which is the pop radio. I was like, I was, it was a nightmare because I was a chaotic person, the child of recently divorced parents and, and just starting at music college and leaving school and being asked to play here, there and everywhere. It was, it was tough, but I had a lot of good support from my teachers in the end. And I just, yeah, focused on, the, on my practicing. <laughs> All right. Hold that thought. We're going to pick it up later. We're going to have some music. This is, uh, oh, I don't have the date. It was 2018. Um, the Mozart Oboe Quartet with Kristen and Richard and Annie. And um, I'll, I'll find the date for, for this one when we come back. Um, so here we have, we'll start with some music today. Mozart K370, the, the, Quartet for Oboe and Strings, 
in F major.
All right, we're back. Um, Mozart's uh, Oval Quartet, and that was re that was recorded um, October nineteenth, two thousand eighteen. And I know you play, 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 play. I, I know it's so evident in in the <laughs> in the recording. I mean, the thing is, it's just like you when you play with such good people, you're lifted always. But when there's such respect between us as well, there's this sense of somehow it just becomes one thing together even though we don't play together all the time the three of them have got so good at playing together and it's just like you feel lifted and then when you get that the music lifts you too i mean it is a, it is an extraordinary piece even so it's a total jewel and um the the oboist that it was written for must have been something incredibly special friedrich Rau, because the the instrument has had basically two keys on it but I mean, that's that's incredible that the high notes he could just pop them out like that. So what he must have been really something. What, what about that complete mental breakdown in the last movement? Like, what? How, how could they have possibly played that with two keys? Well, it's really weird because for every three notes that the strings have, I have eight notes. So what's the lowest common denominator between eight and three? <laughs> that going to be twenty-four? I don't know. Yeah. So, so the, if you divide it into, if you subdivide it, three into twenty-four and eight into twenty-four, you'll see where the 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 teeth of the of the wheel actually coincide, and it's not that often. I mean, it's an insane piece of maths, um, and I think it's it's actually a bit like a kind of Mediterranean um, chef's freakout. It's like he's he's coming with the chopper, and he's about to you know cut up somebody who said his food's not good. <laughs> it, it totally is. It, it's a, yeah. it's a, it, it's it's the oval quartet equivalent of of the harpsichordist's mental breakdown in Brandenburg Five. So, ah, uh, yeah. But so so this is this this one when we're putting when I was putting this program together, it's like this is the next show. And so I asked you. Well, I asked you for one piece that we're going to hold <laughs> for the end, <clears throat> but I asked you about other videos that you might have, and you sent this. Gorgeous piece of Roussel. Yeah. And, yeah. and it, it describes your life out of Camerata Pacifica. So so tell us what's this what's this group? Where is uh, it? It's, it's um so okay, it's a it's a quite new group. It's called Orsino. Right. You, record, you recorded this little piece on July 10th this year. So this, this is a, exactly. this is a COVID recording. It's a lockdown piece, yeah. So Orsino has been founded by the flute player in the group, Adam Walker, who until recently was the first flute in the London Symphony Orchestra and he's been a major soloist as well. He's recorded a beautiful flute concerto by Hugh Watkins who I know has been to Camerata fairly recently. Um, that's the most beautiful piece actually, really worth listening to. Um, Adam is a very inspiring musician and he, found, he founded this group on leaving the London Symphony Orchestra to kind of really focus on chamber music. So. It has um, Matthew Hunt, who's a, a principal clarinet in, in Germany, but British. Amy Harmon, who played in the steampunk 
programme of yours, who's a great friend of mine about to have her second baby right now, principal bassoon in the English National Opera, Alec Frank Gemmill, who is one of the leading young horn players in the world right now, incredible artist, and me, and Adam. And the pianist is a remarkable pianist, yet very young, um, his late 20s, Pavel Kolesnikov, who's recording exclusively for Hyperion. But the reason we did this concert, this particular um, piece, was because we were at the end of a two-day record uh, um, rehearsal session for recordings. So we've just made our first recording for Shandos Records, and it's a whole disc of French wind and piano music um, from the Belle Epoque era, which is sort of turn of the century from quite, quite late in the 19th century into the early 20th century. And Albert Roussel was a composer who, he's not that well known, he's kind of impressionist style composer. And this piece is for wind quintet and piano, and it's just, it's just the most beautiful thing. And we've now, since we did this recording um, for that in that evening, we've brought, we've brought, we've recorded it in a beautiful hall in London. But that that hall that we did that recording in is very special too. It's called the Razumovsky Studio, Razumovsky Academy, and a, a crazy, crazy dude called Oleg Kogan bought a shop in North London, and then got a digger, and then dug the back of it out, and then bricked it with the most exquisite bricks and made a, a 70 seat concert hall. How his hands still work on a cello, I have no idea, but they do, he's amazing. And it is a beautiful, unfortunately, it's kind of closed down for concerts right now, but they use it for, they've got a small teaching studio upstairs, they've got a very good Steinway there, got a little walled garden, I mean, it's perfect. There's, you can even park there, it's unheard of in London. <laughs> um, so he very kindly gave us these, these um, rehearsal studio days there, on the basis that we did a kind of run through of some of the program for his new um, te uh, technical guy who's called Asa Khan. And Asa, um, is, they've basically kitted it out with really high quality recording and visuals equipment. So it was kind of an experiment in a way for them, but we, we were lucky because we got to broadcast it for a thing called the Bite Size Proms. And if you go to Instagram or to YouTube and you look up Bite Size Proms, it's a tiny concert every single evening for eight weeks. And um, it's, it's an aid of the, what used to be the Musicians Benevolent Fund, which is now called Help Musicians. And they sometimes have a, a young artist's um, concert in the evening as well. There's a young oboist who's, who I've s suggested for us, who's doing a young artist one. Um, and it's just lovely, lovely little tiny concerts, just sort of as an aperitif before the rest of your evening, whatever you're doing, really worth looking at. But the piece, the Roussel, is so beautiful. It's kind well, of, it kind of, so it has a sort of uh, pillars on the outside, which is the same music. Um, but in the middle, it's full of fantasy. Let's hear it. So um, it, they, this was recorded on July 10th. It's a COVID piece. And here we have this Roussel divertissimo.
that was that was absolutely beautiful. Um, and I think you might have heard Flash in when we were doing that last introduction. <laughs> but Flash was he's I becoming miss more, Flash. Well, he's becoming more and more insistent about being part of the introductions. <laughs> All right, so the last piece on the program, this is, this is a big surprise for everybody. So, and I was there, I was at this performance and what we're going to have, what we're going to hear from Nick is um, the C major oboe concerto, Mozart's oboe concerto with the BBC <laughs> Symphony Orchestra. And this, this is from July 18th, 2008. And it was the opening concert of the proms. Yeah, it was. I opened the proms. Yeah, it was. It was. Uh, you know, I got the call. It was in. So it was in July. I got the call in April about it, and I was like, really so close to the to the gig, and it was really exciting. I mean, it's one of those things where you just go, well, you pinch yourself a little bit when you've had the call, and then because it was it was live on the TV and everything, it was it was just such fun to do, and it was with. Yiji Bielachavik, who's the Czech conductor, who was their principal conductor at the time, and then went back to the Czech Philharmonic. Who I, I, I loved him. He's unfortunately died fairly recently. Um, he was the most adorable person. Um, but the thing is, it, it, when you, I mean, I play that piece so often, but I, what I decided to do on that occasion was to sort of just look at it again, check that all the articulations were exactly as I wanted them, because Mozart wasn't all that clear about the articulation, so you can choose your own and also write new cadenzas and um, one of the things that I did that nobody kind of noticed actually was that in the slow movement cadenza I quoted the Strauss four last songs um, because that was coming on later in the program <laughs> so, and not a single critic or anybody picked it up and that's the first time I've ever talked about it. <laughs> <laughs> well I love it so the 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 Video, so this is 2008. So the video yeah. quality is definitely poor. So yeah. when you're seeing this, but the audio quality is BBC standard audio quality. Yeah. But you, it's just, it's such a joyous performance. But that's probably because it's a piece of flute music, really, when we think about it. Well, if it was, it wouldn't be joyous. <laughs> <laughs> it would be shrill. <laughs> so, if, 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 so Mozart actually um, was engaged by this. Dutch guy, Dijon or Dijon, to write, I think, something like um, three concertos and a, and a couple of, of flute quartets. And he wrote the G major flute concerto. And then um, he was somewhat distracted by a woman, Constanza Weber. So ah, he was, right. he was, uh, uh, oh no, Alavisi, Al Aloisia. David. Oh, the sister. Yeah, that's right. And um, yeah, the singer. She was incredible. Yeah. You know, right. he wrote an, an amazing series of vocalese exercises for her, mm -hmm. which are scandalously hard. And there's a very famous concertare, O Bella Mia, O Fiamma, uh, Bella Mia, O Fiamma, which is it's all augmented fourth. It's really, really tricky to sing. So um, I, he was def he definitely, actually, it's quite funny because my father had the hots for one of my mum's older sisters. <laughs> I think it's a thing. <laughs> well, so, so the point of the story here is he wrote the G major flute concerto. And then the, for the second flute concerto that he had to deliver to this Dutchman, he, he took <clears throat> the C major oboe concerto and transposed it up a note and said, here. Yeah. But he got busted. Did he? <laughs> he and and the guy didn't want to pay him. And this is where where the the no, people say oh, the right. story. Oh, Mozart didn't even like the flute um, mm -hmm. because. And I contest this because I don't think that's entirely true. The guy, well, he he. So Dijon said, "Okay, I'm not paying you." And Mozart's dad got on his case. Come on, come on, grow up. You need to write. The, you need to get paid. And Mozart write. Moreover, I I can't. I, I cannot bear to write for an instrument I cannot stand. But what you had was this horny teenager who wanted to be <laughs> going after Aloysia Weber. And instead, his dad was like, when you do your work. Anyway. Did you know that um, when he wrote it in, in Salzburg, that he was living in rooms opposite an oboist? And he wrote in his diary about how much he loved to hear this oboist playing scales every day. 
Uh -huh. so, so, I mean, we learn from that, that oboists have played scales since the classical period. We also learn that, that the very first gesture in the oboe part is a scale upwards. And in fact, that scale upwards um, exists in other pieces of Mozart's of the 24th piano concerto. In the very final C major section inside the dark C minor sections, that bit, it's got a C major scale exactly the same thing. He just, I think he thought of the oboe scalically, actually. I think he loved that. Yeah. And it's so funny to hear it. But it's, um, it's, it's, a, it's always such a joy to play it. And the slow movement has such calmness in it, such presence. And, and um, it also does give you a chance to, to write your own cadenzas. I now have a cadenza, actually, that I use, written by a friend of mine, which is very unusual. But it uses both the orchestral oboes. So you get an oboe trio. So just to kind of dig in the fact that it's not a flute concerto anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Pardon me. It is, um, well, let's listen to it. From the opening concert of the proms, and it was, I mean, the proms, they're just such the joyous occasions. Mm. This is a magical performance of Mozart's C major oboe concerto. Oh, and if you look into the orchestra, you see our horn player, Mark Nolan, with quite the coiffure, too. <laughs> so, so here we go. Nick, thank you. It's lovely to see you. Thank you for this feature. Stay cool. And I'll try. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, here's some fantastic Mozart.
Thank you. 